Ciao amici, benvenuti al Facile Come Italiano. Hello everybody, welcome to Zezi Italian. I'm Reza and in this session we have reviewing of the last three sessions just like the old tradition of our channel. So, what are we gonna review? The last three sessions were about numbers and adjectives and questioning. And well, we're gonna exactly review them in this uh, pattern and order. So we would start from the numbers. I told you all the numbers. I'm not going to tell you every number that I told you in that session. I'm just going to tell you the rules. So from 1 to 10, I said, then after 10, I said that you just have to put 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on before 10. Like 11, 12, 13, 14. And I just said that 15 is kind of the most different one. That would be 15. That means 15. And then 16 is 16. And then I said that for 17, 18, and 19, we have a big difference because we don't put 7, 8, 9 before 10. Instead, we put 7, 8, 9 after 10. Okay? So, we would say 17, 18, 19. Just that easy. Then we had 20, that means 20, that I said can be also the plural form of the word vento, that means wind, but we are just dealing with the meaning that means 20 today at least well 20 20 and then i said for more than 20 you just put one two three four after 20 but you have to uh well follow two uh, rules and the first one is that when you are uh, dealing with two digits number and you have uh, the second number with a vowel at the beginning well, you know, every number, just like every word, ends with a vowel. So when your second number starts with a vowel, you have to delete the last vowel of the first word. How? 21, for example, 21. You have to delete the last vowel of the first number that is 20, so 21. And then for 28, it also happens. 28, because 1 and 8 are the only numbers that have vowel at the beginning. Then 30, 40, and so on are just like 20. Then we had cento, that means 100. And I said you just put the number in front of 100 and you make many other numbers. And for more than 199, you should put the digit before the cento. So we say 200, 300, 400, and so on, until 900, that would be 900. Then we had mille, that means 1,000 or 1,000, each of them. You shouldn't put one before mille to say 1,000. Mille can be 1,000 or 1,000, doesn't have any difference. Then you just put the numbers in front of mille and you make many numbers. But for more than that, you should use mila. Because mila is the plural form of mille. So you should say due mila, tre mila, cento mila, one hundred thousand. And then after that we have milione, that means million. Milione is just like mille. With this difference that milione just means million. For one million you should say un milione. Okay? And well, you just put the numbers in front of that. And for more than that, you should use milioni, that is the plural form of milione. So, due milioni, tre milioni, cento milioni, cento mila milioni. Easy. And then after milione, we have miliardo, that means billion. Miliardo means billion, then un, bil un miliardo means one billion, and more than that would be miliardi, due miliardi, tre miliardi, and so on. And then in that session, I said how you can ask the age of people and how to answer that, how old are you? I said that in Italian language, you don't say how old are you? You say how many years do you have? It's more logical, actually, in my opinion. So you would say, quanti anni hai? Quanti, how many anni years? The plural form of anno, that means year. And then I, you have. So quanti anni hai? How many years do you have? Easy as that. And then you answer, oh, I have this many anni, years. For example, oh, diciannova anni. I have 19 years or I'm 19 years old. 
Then after numbers, we had adjectives. I am not gonna tell you all the 45 important adjectives I said in that session. If you want, go and watch that yourself. But for now, I'm just gonna tell you the important rules and laws that be used in that session. So the first one is that in Italian language, we have two groups of adjectives. The first one is the adjectives that end with O and the second one is the adjectives that end with E. Okay, so these two go into separated groups and the first one that ends with O is like that, that changes depending on the gender or the plurality of the noun that is describing. For example, we have the adjective piccolo, that means a small. Now, if I want to say small baby girl, baby girl means bambina. Okay, bambina, it's feminine singular, it's easy. We should use piccola. Why? Because I said it changes depending on the gender. Piccola, bambina. Small or little baby girl. And what if I use baby boy, bambino, then I should use piccolo. Piccolo, bambino. Now for plurals. For example, I have the word um, bottiglia. Bottiglia means bottle and it's feminine. Now we have the singular form and we, when we make it plural, it would be bottiglie. So now we should use piccole. Piccole bottiglie. Easy as that. And then, for example, for another noun like um, bicchiere. Bicchiere, that means glass, the glass that you use to drink. Bicchiere means that and it's masculine and the plural form is bicchieri. So piccoli bicchieri, small glasses. Just like that, very easy. You just have to change it depending on the gender and the plurality. Then what about the adjectives that end with E? Well, those ones change too, but not depending on the gender. They don't change depending on gender. They only change depending on the plurality. For example, we have this adjective intelligente. That means smart or intelligent. Now, I want to say smart boy or smart girl. girl. Well, boy means ragazzo, masculine singular. Girl means ragazza, Mus uh, sorry, feminine singular. So the first one is masculine, the second one is feminine. But I use intelligente for both of them because it doesn't change as, it doesn't change depending on the gender. So we have ragazzo intelligente, ragazza intelligente. Now when I make them plural, I should also make intelligente plural. So I should say ragazzi intelligenti, ragazze intelligenti, just as that. Very easy, really, 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 very, really easy. Now, in the end of that session, I also said that, well, in Italian language, uh, the adjectives usually come after the noun, okay? Usually they come after the noun they are describing more than 90% of the times. Just there are some kind of adjectives that people mostly use them before the nouns. And there are just a few actually like mm, buono, bello, cattivo, piccolo, grande, nuovo, vecchio and these kind of things. But I again insist and say that this is not that important. It's just something that is common among people. It's not grammatically wrong to put the adjective before or after the noun. You can put it wherever you want, literally wherever you want. Just it's more common to do it like that. So if you want to speak like a native Italian person, you uh, well should learn these things. But if you are just at the beginning of the way or in the middle and you are not planning on doing that. so. You can just uh, forget it and will use the adjectives however you want. Then after adjectives, we had questioning. Well, I said that the easiest way to make a questioning sentence is just saying the sentence in a questioning form. For example, like just that sentence that I said, I have 19 years old or I'm 19 years old. Uh, well, you can just say, do I have 19 years or am I 19 years old? Or you can say, for example, I ventiani, you have 20 years, you are 20 years old. You can also say, I ventiani, are you 20 years old? Just like that. 
but we have questioning words for sure and i'm gonna tell you but i'm not gonna tell all the examples that i said in that session if you want examples and know better how to use them go to that session so here we have cosa cosa means what also can mean thing now we have also ke ke means what again but it also means that but not every kind of that it's uh, kind of how to say that 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 connects the sentences when you are speaking for example i say i went to the house uh, that i used to live in okay this that means ke so cosa ke just like that and you may ask uh, well what is the difference which one should i use both of them they have no difference you can use them however you like in your questioning sentences cosa means what and ke means what too there's no difference after that we have come that means how like come diventare come me because come also means like okay so come diventare come me means how to become like me okay i have translated it word by word in that session if you want then we have perke perke means why or because but well literally it means for what per means for and ke means what but ke also mean can mean that too okay and that's the reason it can also mean because so perke why because easy after perke we have dove that means where for example dove vai stasera where are you going tonight then we have quando that means when quando arrivi a casa when you arrive home if you see italians use preposition before home so literally when do you arrive at home okay and then after that we have quanto well quanto means how many or how much but now that i have explained the adjectives i can explain it better to you uh, see in italian language they consider quanto a kind of adjective okay so uh, if you look at it and remember the rules in the adjectives uh, session you can see that quanto is that type of adjective that ends with o so we have quanto quanta quanti quante because it can also change by the gender quanto quanta or how much they are singular and they mean how much and you use them uh, for the nouns and you change them by the gender of the noun if the noun is feminine you use quanta when the noun is masculine you use quanto and then quanti and quante that are plural uh, are used uh, to say how many okay the quantities that you can measure how many quanti quante and well you use them when you change them depending on the gender of the noun if it's masculine you use quanti if it's feminine you use quante and the last uh, tip is that when you are using quanto to describe a verb well the verbs don't have gender so you should use quanto always you use quanto to describe verbs with this uh, well adjective questioning word kind of and well the session is over i hope i have been able to uh, say these things quickly so it wouldn't take much of your time uh, i hope you have learned something and well practice 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 that's the best thing you can do to learn a language see you in the next couple of days